The Adafruit Learning System Raspberry Pi Web IDE is a powerful yet easy to use integrated development environment for your Raspberry Pi. This is part two in a series of videos that cover every aspect of the Raspberry Pi Web IDE. In our previous video, we went through how to install the Web IDE, so if you haven't already installed the Web IDE, you may want to start with that video first. We also have a great step-by-step -step guide on how to install it at learn.adafruit.com slash web IDE. Launch the Web IDE by typing raspberrypi.local into your browser. If you are signed into Bitbucket, you'll see the initial starting screen of the editor. The editor is broken up into a few sections in its most basic form. To the left you have the File and Folder Navigator. Click on a file or folder to open them and navigate back by clicking on the blue section at the top. To the right we have the Editor section where you will do most of your work. The top part of the editor is where you will write and edit code and at the bottom is where the terminal will show up once you have run the code. As you can see, we've started you out with two repositories. The first is the Adafruit repository that we will get to in a bit. The second is the MyPy Projects repository. This will contain all of the projects that you want to work on, or at least to start. The MyPy Projects repository is also saved in your Bitbucket repository. The benefits of this is that if your SD card were to become corrupted, your work is saved in a private repository on Bitbucket, so nothing is lost. The next time you reinstall the Web ID and load it, you'll see that all of your work is listed again. You can also see there is an option to clone a repository. This allows you to create a specific project, a complex project, or a project outside of your MyPy Projects repository. To do this, all you'll need to do is create a repository within bitbucket.org. One thing to note is that you'll want to create a Git repository and not a Mercurial repository. The Web ID only has support for Git at this time. Now, click the Clone a Repository link in the Web IDE. You should see a dialog with instructional text and examples on which type of URL you should choose to copy. In this case, you want the read-write URL. Paste that into the text area and click Clone Repository. You should now see the new repository listed in your All Repositories folder in the Web IDE. The Adafruit repository is a feature we've included that we think is useful to learn how to interface with various sensors in Python. There are quite a few examples included, and it's just a Git repository, so when we add new examples, your Pi will get updated with the latest Python code. Let's say you own an Adafruit BMP085 breakout board, and you have a great idea for a project. A nice shortcut to starting out would be to navigate to the Adafruit repository, and then click on the Adafruit BMP085 project. Once you do that, you can either run the examples as they are, or you can actually copy the projects over to your MyPy projects folder. The benefit of this is that you can now edit the project you've just copied, and it will be saved in your Bitbucket repository. Once you've clicked the Copy This Project, you can navigate back to the top-level directory in the Web IDE, and then click on the My Pi Projects folder. You should now see the Adafruit BMP085 project listed. You can click that folder, then open any file, and you should see the full editing functionality enabled, such as saving, running, debugging, and visualizing. You've just copied over the Adafruit BMP085 project and have it open in the MyPy Projects folder. We have a new idea that we'd like to implement, and instead of using one of the existing examples, we can create a new file. Click the Create New File link at the bottom of the left navigator. One note about creating files is that you'll want to make sure to add the .py extension or the type of file extension that you want to use. The Web ID uses the file extension to determine how to run each type of file that you create, so it's very important to conclude that. You should now see the new file in the left navigator. Oops, looks like I spelt the file name wrong. No worries, just right click on the file to rename it. We have also included a handy way to quickly upload files to a repository. Say you want to reference an image in a project. Just click the upload file button and navigate to where you have that image on your computer and then click open. Want to view that image right from the web IDE? No problem. Click for a full preview of that image. Now let's edit the personal BMP085 file that we created earlier and add some code for our project to it. Click the file name in the left navigator and you should see the toolbar change and your empty file open in the right editor area. For now, let's just copy over a little code from one of the examples and then we can save the file. You can save the file in a few ways. The easiest is just clicking save in the editor action bar above the open file. Another way is to use a Command S or Control S shortcut to save as you edit. If you make another change, you can see that you have unsaved changes by looking at the file name in the left navigator. If it has an asterisk at the end and is italicized, the file has unsaved changes. 
You can save or you can discard the changes if you navigate away from the file. So we've created our amazing new project that will change the world, but how do we actually test that it works? Once you've saved the file, you can then click the Run button in the Editor action bar. This will cause the terminal to display at the bottom half of the editor, and your file will then run. You can view its output, make some changes, and then run it again, or you can close the terminal if everything looks good. In the coming weeks, we'll be releasing videos that cover more advanced features such as the Step Debugger, the Visualizer, and the Scheduler. So be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.